Vegans are one of the dumbest segments to sell to. And this might be a controversial statement, but I am saying this because I am very experienced with both of those things, being vegan and dumb. But why would I say such a thing about my people who want to save all the animals in the world? Because we are not kind to our own vegan self. We pay a crazy amount of money for the simplest things and we literally buy anything that is labeled vegan, regardless if we need it at all or not. Vegan cheese, vegan floss, vegan cups, or vegan organ oil, which to this day I still have no idea why I bought it or what it is used for. So today I'm going to explore why we, the vegans, are one of the best target segments out there for brands to create products for and to advertise to. Let's get munching. Oh, and please subscribe or let me know your thoughts in the comments because that would be quite nice. Right now, around 1% of the world's population is vegan, which is approximately 79 million people as of 2021. While in some countries this percentage is obviously higher than others, it is not a very big market if you look at the bigger picture. But do you know what's good about vegan products? Even non-vegans can also enjoy them. So instantly this segment just got a whole lot bigger. I know, mind-blowing stuff. Before moving forward, let's address two major misconceptions going around about vegan people that you might have. One, that they want special treatment. And two, that living vegan is expensive. The first one is totally true. We do want special treatment. We want all the special stuff. The second is only partially true, because living this way doesn't have to be expensive, but a lot of products and brands bet on the willingness of vegan people buying expensive vegan stuff. And there is a constant scrutiny at teasing about us, which actually might make a little bit of sense now that I think about it. I mean, have you ever seen these vegans out there haunting the aisles of the supermarkets looking for these little green stickers and V marks on each and every product, googling E numbers like there's no tomorrow, But buying vegan has been growing like crazy as a trend for quite a few years now, and companies do act on it because it is supposedly what the customer wants. So in summary, there are more vegans and people interested in plant-based products out there, therefore it makes sense to tap into this market for all these brands. Yet again, another mind-blowing discovery in this video. I'll try to keep them coming. But I think here is an important question that a traditionally non-vegan brand has to think about before they tap into this market. The real hardcore vegan customers not just buy vegan products, but they only buy products from actual vegan companies because veganism to them is not a dietary, but more of a lifestyle choice. On the other hand, there are people out there who are a bit more, let's say, relaxed about where their vegan products are coming from, and they are just happy that there are more and more options out there for them. I mean, now we can get vegan KitKats over here in Denmark, produced by one of the most controversial food companies ever. I think that's pretty telling where things are headed. Contrary to popular belief, vegans are not psychopaths. We also enjoy the good things that life has to offer and often miss things from our days before we were vegans. Oof, okay, maybe we don't miss everything. For example, dairy companies that start producing plant-based products won't be winning over these lifestyle vegans, but I am personally happy to see more variety from these brands because they introduce this idea to a wider segment with their products, which is eventually better for the animals. And that end result is something I like very much. The decision is big for these brands. If they want to step into the world of veganism, what are they willing to call these products? Do they go full steam ahead and just straight up call them vegan? Or is into the pain by just pure labeling it plant-based and hoping not to scare away too many people. As an example, look at this piece of rye bread. There is nothing special about it. It is a staple in many homes in Denmark. Probably it can stay top of mind with very little advertising and a good shelf placement in the supermarkets. But if you look closer at the packaging, what can you see? It in fact has the vegan label on it. And I think that this is a huge deal when more traditional brands are also actively and very noticeably moving into the vegan market. Even though I live in Denmark, I don't buy rye bread often for myself. But the result of this brand's positioning is that when I do buy rye, I always buy from them. The vegan sticker is one of the most powerful branding moves that you could do to your product here in 2022. Incoming pressure from customers and the general trend of trying to be more sustainable 
have accelerated this change greatly, even here in Denmark, which is admittedly lacking with vegan products compared to our neighboring countries. There are omnipresent products out there that are excellently vegan, such as Oreos or Ritz crackers. But I think we can measure this green change over here by looking at more conservative Scandinavian food brands doing openly vegan things, such as this Remlel made by Samsu, or Arla moving into oat milk with the Yurt brand. I mean, if one of the biggest dairy producers in Europe is creating its own plant-based products, that is pretty significant, isn't it? Remember when I said that the placement of the V-label is super important? It is crucial because for people like me, having it in front of the packaging is a good thing. But I also understand that this scares people away that have been buying the same loaf of bread for two decades. And now with the vegan logo on it, they think it will taste horrible and they might turn into a carrot if they eat it. Oh no. So although this is just a tiny little logo, it is such a huge decision for the brands to figure out if they are willing to go all in on this or just gently ease into this brand positioning instead. And this is where the dumbness of the vegans and the brilliant buying power of this segment for brands comes into play. A lot of us are ready to pay extra for vegan options. But is the price difference really that big? Let's do a quick round comparison to show you what I'm talking about. We might be dumb and not drive a Ferrari because we spend all our money on cashew yogurt. But I think a lot of us are able to comprehend that changing product recipes and food production lines from traditional ingredients into vegan proof ones is not a small task for any company. We want that special treatment and therefore we choose to pay extra for it. But if I was a startup or an existing company that is just about to develop a new product, food stuff or otherwise, I would just make it vegan from the start. I said this before, but I think it begs to be repeated that having the vegan sticker on your product is one of the most powerful branding moves that you could pull off in 2022. Consumer interest in plant-based stuff is growing. Making your product more eco-friendly has a huge positive pull from the customers and going into this direction will just make products and brands even more future-proof. They just have to figure it out if they are willing enough to put that vegan label on front of the packaging right next to their logo or not. Either way, the dumb vegans win in the end. My whole personality doesn't revolve around being one of these people, but from the video I think you can tell that this is a personal interest of mine and I think it is extremely important. So, I think it would be super cool if you would eat a few veggie meals each week from now on if you can. I'm sure you can. Maybe you could also try subscribing. Thanks. I always buy from them.